All right, just came across another story further proving the kind of fruit that comes out of Islam. Uh, once again, over in Africa, North Africa, because uh, you know Islam is just running rampant over there, and anyone who doesn't follow Islam, especially Christians, are being just persecuted and attacked on a daily basis. But this story is out of Uganda. It says, uh, this is on robertspencer.org, uh, formerly called Jihad Watch. Then uh, they cover more stuff now. Uh, instead of just, you know, they still do Islam, but they also do other stuff as well. It says, Muslim cleric converts to Christianity. Muslim screaming Allah Akbar destroy church and pastor's house. Because that's the thing about Islam, is that when you convert away from Islam, well, you're a goner at that point. They, they view you as you should be a goner. But anyway, continuing on. Uh, Sheikh Musoya NC and his wife are in danger of being killed. The death penalty for apostasy, apostasy is part of Islamic law. It is based on the Quran. Uh, and he's quoting the Quran there, verse, uh, Quran chapter 4, verse 89, talks about the death penalty for apostasy. Uh, I'm not going to read the whole thing because, quite frankly, I don't feel like reading that demonic, blasphemous uh, book. But continuing on, a hadith depicts Muhammad saying, quote, whosoever cha uh, changed his Islamic religion, then kill him. Then they quote from Bukhari 984-57. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right, but the death, the death penalty for apostasy is part of Islamic law according to all schools of Islamic jur jurisprudence. Jurisprudence, sorry. Not good at reading on a computer. There are still the position of all the, Islam the schools of Islamic jurisprudence that both, uh, both Sunni and Shiite, Sheikh Yusuf al Qaradawi, the, the most renowned and prominent Muslim cleric in the world, has stated, quote, the Muslim jurists are unanimous that apostates must be punished, yet they differ as to determining what kind of punishment to be inflicted upon them. The majority of them, including uh, the four main schools of jurisprudence, Hanafi, Mal I'm not going to bother pronouncing that, it's all just a bunch of... of uh, of uh, Islamic paganism, as well as the four uh, schools of jurisprudence, uh, Shiite schools, basically they all agree that apostates should be killed. Uh, Kara Dawi also once famously said, quote, if they had gotten rid of the apostasy punishment, Islam wouldn't exist today, unquote. That, that, and that's the truth about that too. You go to most Muslim countries, you see it's like 98% Muslim, 99% Muslim. Yeah, because people are, are professing Islam, but is that what they're actually practicing in secret? Because if they're open about not being a Muslim, what happens to them? Well, they're killed. You know, like over in uh, Iran, they say it's like, what, 90, 80%, you know, 80, 90% Muslim over there. But when you actually look at the underground Christians, uh, they're, they're, they're growing in number. In fact, I read, I read a poll that only 40% of Iranians are like actual, like devout, committed Muslims. Most of them just put that on the, on the poll and that's pretty much it. Well, they're Muslim in name only, but continuing on. Uh, Muslim villagers destroy church building and pastor's house, Morningstar News, May 17, 2022. Muslims, uh, a furious that an Islamic leader and his wife put their faith in Christ, destroyed a pastor's house and church uh, building in eastern Uganda on May 6th, source, May 6th, sources said. After Sheikh Munsuya Ansi and his wife accepted Christ the morning of May 6th, that same afternoon, Muslims wielding machetes and clubs in Malakashlomo village in Kibbutz, I'm probably not saying this right, so just bear with me. Uh, district burned and demolished the, the Malakomo Revival Church of God building and the home of Pastor Wilberforce Naya, the pastor said. Church members have visited the home of Ansi, Ansi, I'm probably not saying that right, at 9 a.m. and prayed for his wife after learning that she had been sick for two years. After prayer for healing, Ansi said she immediately rose and asked for food. That's the power of prayer right there. Something that Allah doesn't do, by the way, I want to point that out. Quote, she had been suffering from acute pain in her throat that made her not able to swallow dry food, as well as from an inflamed breast. She could only take liquid food, Anasi told Morningstar News. Quote, after prayer, she requested some cooked bananas, which were which was prepared and eaten with ease. The breast inflammation was reduced. These miracles led me and my wife to give our lives to, Je give our lives to Jesus as Lord and Savior, unquote. Muslim and Christian neighbors overheard the jubilation and came to see what was taking place at the sheikh's house. Quote, a few members of the mosque uh, arrived and also Christians and I explained them, to them what had happened in the presence of the evangelistic team from the church. And as he said, after having tea, uh, sorry, quote, after having tea, they left. Not good at reading on the computer. Plus, I'm running on, on lack of sleep as well, so just bear with me. Whenever I get lack of sleep, I always just have trouble reading stuff. In general, it just that's what it does. But uh, he later went to he later went to the church for afternoon worship, and at 4 p.m., worshippers saw a Muslim mob in the distance. Said Pastor Naya. Yeah, Muslim mob. That's what they do. That's what that's what uh, the Ishmaelite Muslims do. 
Uh, quote, they were carrying machetes, clubs, sticks, marching towards our church, building uh, building while chanting Allah Akbar, Allah Akbar, Allah Akbar, which is basically Allah is great in Arabic. They're heathen Arabian lunar god. They're moon deity. Uh, they, they're chanting that slogan. Pastor Naya told Morningstar News, quote, we quickly left the church because we all we knew we were in danger for having the, for having a sheikh pray with us and quickly rain, quickly rang the police, unquote. A Christian neighbor who had been among the visitors to Ansi's home to hear why he and his wife were celebrating said that the Muslim visitors had gone to the mosque to inform the imam. Uh, quote, as we left the home of the sheikh, some of my Muslim neighbors were not happy about the conversion of the, of the sheikh and his wife to Christianity, unquote, said the church member whose name is withheld. Quote, some were even saying that they were going to report the incident in the mosque, report the incident in the mosque since it was a Friday prayer day for the Muslims. Unquote. After an hour, seeing the Muslim mob in the distance, the pastor and others saw smoke rising from the church building. And, and keep in mind too, Uganda is not a Muslim majority country. In fact, Uganda is actually a Christian majority country, and yet the Muslims still act like a bunch of Ishmaelites over there. You know, this is this is what happens. This is what Islam does. I'll tell you why? Because it's the descendants of Ishmael. What does Genesis 16 verse 11 to 12 say? You know, wild man. Okay. And, and by the way, I need to clear something up as well. No, I don't hate Ishmael. No, I don't. I'm not. I don't believe Ishmael is a bad guy. I believe Ishmael is actually in heaven. I happen to believe he is actually in heaven right now. I'm not saying that Ishmael himself was a bad guy. I'm saying his descendants, the Muslims, behave like you know, like Genesis 16, verse 11 to 12. So anyway, I could say more on the matter, but I don't want to be getting a hate speech strike because YouTube just can't, just does not like freedom of speech. So anyway, uh, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with all the brethren. Goodbye. Thank you.